Lovely. Right. So, first off, doll head. Okay, she's ready for it. But let's talk about product. <coughs> Excuse me. So we know that the consistency of the product, and this is number one, should be like cream cheese or icing for a cake. And that means, guys, that the, my hair looks crazed, that the consistency should be like that. So this is Blonde Me Clay, and it's mixed one to one and a half. Now, I know that not all of you use Blonde Me Clay, and that's absolutely fine. But this is designed specifically to paint for, and it just the consistency is no hassle for me. It's easy. But I also have Blonde Me Nine Levels, which is I use for scalp bleaching, and I use for foiling. Now, the consistency of that at one to two is very different. Now... Yes, you can mess around with this. You can put less developer in it. But as soon as you start playing around with manufacturer's instructions, you lose your liability insurance and you can't guarantee the results that you're gonna get. So you need to think about those things too. Powder lightness can be used for balayage. It's not a problem at all. But try to go for the ones that are designed for painting. There's loads of lightness on the market now. You see how that's just too runny? Good. The second thing. Tip number two is your brush. If you've got a brush like that, look how thick that is. Zoom in there. That's my mixing brush. It hasn't even been washed properly. But if you've got a brush like that, it's really hard. And it mean and these get splayed out the, the more messy they get. And that means you can't get a really nice application. I'm going to demonstrate it for you so that you can believe me. Whereas, of course, this, my demo one, designed specifically for that kind of thing, it's much softer. So you can see that. Brushes are really, really important. That's why I spent two years developing them. So the other tip for your brush is guys, don't let the assistants wash it. Wash it yourself and pop it away. And there's a little trick that you can do, which is if you wanna keep all the things together, just go like that. And that keeps it nice and flat. That's a nice little trick. Okay, let's go to the dolly. Let's get in with the real work, hey? Right. Here we go, meringue, somebody said meringue. Yeah, absolutely, meringue is a good one too. I'm just gonna let you drop these comments down here, if I can. Can't do it. Ah, that's nice for you, isn't it? A view, a ring light. There we go, <laughs> happens to the best of us. So I'm gonna use this brush, which is designed specifically for mixing, and it's, a, it's not the greatest brush for painting in it again. These brushes are by me or Denman. Now, put some product on there, and that's the second. Third tip, do not use the brush you're painting with to mix the color. It gets too messy. Now watch this. Let's imagine, there's loads of tips in here, guys. I should write them down. So, say you decide that you want to do your balayage and that's the kind of section you want. Let's go in there. See that? It's not deep underneath, it's, it's like a weave section. The first thing you'll notice is that there's not much hair at the ends. Versus going in and taking a V. See that? It's much thicker. And look at the hair that you've got at the ends. Now the hair at the ends is what you saturate. So that's where you get the pop. So if you take a slice, rather than deep V, you're not gonna get <clears throat> the effect that you want. Now, let's take this slice. Let me show you here. Now, a lot of people will put the product up here. Now, you can see that product already isn't laying on the hair, and it's a slice, then they'll try and they'll use the brush like this. So you can see that I'm painting down, but look, all that product's coming underneath there. And then they'll pop the board underneath and they'll go like this and look what happens. Not so good, right? Does that make sense, guys? This line here you see this, because the product's too runny, you've got a lump there, which is gonna dry like a lump, process like a lump. You've got 
dog patches here because the product's too runny. Patches through there, which is going to show up lines. It's weaker through the bottom. And at the very end, it's not really that covered and it's weak. So what's going to happen with that is, you know when you get marbling, you, you rinse a section, you see all that marbling? That's because of that. Or it suddenly becomes hot spot. So it's light, dark, light. It usually goes dark, light, dark. And that's because of the application and the brush that's been used on there. So be careful with that. Now let's just go ahead and use this, the clay. Exactly mixed in the same proportions. Don't double dip. Okay. Now, let's just take this section here. Now here, I've taken this V underneath. And again, I just want to repeat this. The reason we do that is because we get more hair at the bottom. So you're using the clay and you're using the right brush. But if you paint this way, Like you would paint a foil and you do a bit of that so you back brush it up a bit and you do a bit of that now you see i'm used to putting lots of products in it what's going to happen there i've taken the right section because i've taken the deep v but i've applied it this way so here where i want lift it's too dark and then you've got darker sections through there. And then at the bottom, it's not light enough. So it's not all the way underneath, but it has gone slightly underneath because of the way that the brush has gone on it. So you've pushed down. This is foil. Foil, you need to saturate. Balayage, you need to paint on the surface. Okay? Right. And it's not even. Exactly. If it ain't white, it's not going to be light. You know it, guys. You know all this stuff. So let's do it again. And try it this way. So here's the section. Right? You load in the middle. Because if you load up here, you just go in there, you can't control and you get a lump there, and it's going to be too light at the root. How do you get out of that? You have to feather down, and you have to take the back of your tint brush and just soften that. Now, so I've, made, I've got out of that mess because you can get out of these little pickles that you get into. But see my fingers, the tension hasn't softened at all. That tension is tight. There's no need for a board because you're painting on the surface, so you don't need to put something underneath here. If you do this, which lots of people do, and I've made sure that I've... That looks nice, but there's a problem in here. Let's lift this up. Look at all that. And all that's going to draw lift in light areas and dark areas. And that's because I pushed the board too far up and under the hair. The board doesn't need to go underneath it because you're painting on the surface. You use the board to hold your product and then you just saturate the tips of it. Hey, Chicago's in the house. How are you doing, Chicago? Right. Let's do another one. Same soft brush, another common mistake. So we've taken a deep V, okay. And we're going like this. And then we take this product and we're trying to 
I'm not putting enough on it. See, my, my, my go-to is to put more on. And that's it. Let's put a few marks in it. Like that. Okay. Right, here. This. What's going to happen here? Let's dissect it. Bring it out for you. So I often see this when people first start because going from a foil into a freehand is a totally different emotion. It's a totally different feeling and you have to approach it slightly differently. So here, this is because not enough product has been put on, okay? You're gonna have a hot spot here, a line there, hot spot, a dark line in the end, a dark line on the outside, a light piece in the middle, dark on the side there, going through and there's not enough on the ends. It's not been saturated. It doesn't matter what product you use, if you don't get that lovely even flow, when you rinse it, your top lip is gonna start sweating and when you blow dry her, you're gonna be asking for the curling irons. Somebody put the curling irons on please so that you can hide behind a curl. What I want you to be able to do is to blow dry it straight and it look fantastic and then you can curl it if you want to. So we can see the different mistakes in there, yeah? We're liking this? Everyone liking this? Now, let me move the doll head out of the way. <clears throat> the very first rule for balayage is that balayage is dictated by the haircut. So if the haircut's heavily layered, you need to think about your placement. If it's a long layered haircut, you still need to probably pop some underneath. So when a client comes in and says, I want a half head balayage and she's got loads of layers in there and she's not had it before, she'll need a full head the first time and then she can go on to a half head. If it's short at the back, now, you know that kind of 80s look where it was sort of blonde on top and dark underneath, um, even on short hair, <clears throat> that's not gonna work either. You can't balayage through those short pieces at the back. So it's either a tint to get it all lighter and then some lighter pieces through the top or it's strategically placed pieces that flow maybe on the top on around this sort of area and nothing through the back. <clears throat> Again, if the client wants to be that blonde, it might not be a balayage surface. So just think about what the client's asking for and what's possible in there. Good. Oh good, I'm glad you're liking that. So, dictated by the haircut, first of all. Consistency of product is super, super important, yeah? Now, with a clay, you're only gonna get seven levels of lift. If it's a level four, and she wants to be level 22, we know level 22 doesn't exist, but you know, I've got level 22. That service is not gonna be right for her, and that's when you maybe want to go in and do a foil technique or something like that. So it's like not everyone can have everything that they want. If she's level four and she only wants to be an eight, then that's totally possible. But if she's a level four and she wants to be super cool from root to tip, balayage might not be the right choice for her because it's always gonna be a little bit warmer towards the root. Good. Next one, sectioning. Let's bring the doll head back in. And let me get a brush and let me show you. So, if you go straight across like you would a foil, you're gonna put more of these pieces in. And that means you're gonna do more work <clears throat> and you're gonna think it's great. And then when you rinse it, it's too blonde and it's too heavy and we haven't got the negative space built into it. So generally speaking for a sectioning pattern, I always go in a deep V. It means I can put less in, work quicker and get the result that I want. Hair density. If the hair's super, super thick, you're probably gonna to have to put more in because it's super, super thick. If the hair's really coarse, you might have a little bit of a struggle with the lift, so you need to think about that too. If the hair is fine, and you know my little saying, three hairs and a wish, you need to put very little in. You don't need to put a lot in at all because the less you put in, less is more. You get a better effect the less work you do, which is great for us. Now, <clears throat> I'm just gonna show you. So, depending on what you want to produce, which again 
is about taste level between you and the client and a conversation that you've had in the run-up to the appointment. Sorry about my arm being in the way there. Let's have a look at that and see what that looks like. So maybe that's our second section. So this is just beneath the occipital bone. One, two, three, four. You start off with more, heavier, bigger ones, and then you go to finer as you build up to it. After this section, because you've got to the occipital bone, the shape of the head changes. And so we start going, the head, shape of the head changes, so we start going into a curve. I'll show you what that looks like. Let's just paint something there, hey, because why not? Let's paint a big one. Now, there is the big boy brush, okay? Now what you want to be doing with a big paint, I'm going to take you through this. I want you to look, we've talked about sectioning, we've talked about where you put your product. Let me turn that around for you a little bit. The next thing is how do you hold your brush? You hold your brush on an angle, so it's slightly tipped onto there. See, I'm, see the angle that it's at? Now, don't move your tension. Keep that tension tight. And see how I work up to the root area. So you can hit the root. You're allowed to go to the root if that's the look you're going for. Now, where do people go wrong on this kind of section? You can see in there, see how soft that is? There's no line in it. There. And there's nothing underneath. The problem is, if this becomes heavy, I don't think I can even do it. See him? That becomes heavy through there, the product's not even. You'll just get a straight line. So you want to make sure that you diffuse it. Now lots of people do this, which is fine. I just think it gets messier. So I like to just paint, 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 and I go like that and continue to build it up. And then put the tip in there. Now let's look at this piece. Let's dissect it. Um, so <clears throat> I'll answer that question in a minute. I'll answer that about developers in a minute. Now look, it's soft, but it has its whole shape in there. There are no dark patches. It is darker through here because it's more delicate. So it will lift not as light through there, but that's what you want. You want a transition from this to this. And that's why you saturate the ends, but you don't saturate underneath all of it. There, see? Really, really important. Somebody just asked me a really good question. If it's clay and it's fine hair, would you use 30 volume? Now clay is totally different to other pre-lighteners because the top of the clay seals over and it dries out. That's why you don't need plastic. And underneath, it's still moist and it's still lifting. So if you think of, my friend Lorraine said to me, if you think about when you go out and you have a sea salted fish that's covered in salt and it's all dry on the outside, but it, when you open it up, it's like steamed inside it and it's really moist. Clay will give you up to seven levels with 40 volume. If you use 30 volume with a clay, you will only get up to four levels and it's up to at the beginning of it. So again, think about the product and where you want to go with it. Okay, good, good. Now, so we've got dictated by the haircut, tension, how you hold your brush, which is really, really important through there. We've got, do you put the board underneath? No, you don't, you only do it to the ends through there. Um, We've got sectioning, which is really important to work through that. Now with your sectioning, the next section here Oh, my doll head's going to get on me. 
I'm either going to go and take this piece here and do one there. Let's do one there for you. And you see what I've done? I've suddenly turned that into a round because that piece is the underneath piece. Yeah? So plenty of negative space. We've got the diagonal, we've got the triangle section underneath and then we can just paint. Let's paint. I hope this is all making sense. Top tips. Right, now here, again, start in the middle. Look at my brush. I'm creating a V. Make sure that tension's tight. I'm gonna go to the root. And here we can see how important the negative space is. The negative space is the darker area through here. Now, if you're painting a wide section like this, if you drop down, you don't want a line there. That's all going to lift up differently. You want it to be soft, so you might just go up slightly in the middle. There. See that? Do you like that? Soft. Nothing underneath at all. Then we come down. There, like so. There we go. Now, as we're now above the crown, we're gonna change the sectioning pattern slightly. And we're gonna go from what was a deep triangle. Push it down to a curl, to a curve. And that allows you to then start thinking about the crown area. Hold on. Watch this, it's gonna drop. <laughs> not having it today. There. There we go. So we've gone from a deep V, as we get towards the crown, we go into a circle area there and work up to the crown area. Now, <clears throat> talking of crowns, they're really, really important. The next tip is that you always work with the natural variance in tone. So, you know, sometimes you'll see lighter pieces towards the front, paint those. That'd be fantastic because it would look supernatural. But you also work with natural curl and waves. So if you've got a split double crown or a crown through there, you want to make sure that just because you blow dried it, it all looks beautiful. But when the lady goes home and she blow dries it, and she doesn't blow dry it as well as you, but if that parts through there and she's got a mirror looking at it and she sees a dark patch, she won't like it. So you have to play around with the with the different movement of the hair and uh, that's what makes it so beautiful, because you get to really understand it. Now, oh, there we go. So application is all about tension. It's about how you hold your brush. You load in the middle, you feather through the end. Less is more. Work with a natural variation of tone. Work with the natural curl patterns. Negative space should always be away from the face, not towards the face, because what you don't want is dark around there. Um, the consistency of the product is super, super important. So play around with your product. Lots of product companies have different products for different things. See what's right for you. <clears throat> Make sure that that mixture is cream cheese-like um, or icing on a cake or meringue even, as somebody said, which is cool. And then um, you always work with the haircut. Always work with the haircut. And then there's something else. And it begins with F. And then it goes with U. F, you, have fun. Have fun with your balayage. If you've got all these videos to go back and look at, <clears throat> I'm gonna work on haircuts for this for next week. Let's see if anyone's asked any questions. Okay, through there, let's have a look here. Let me have a look. Did you enjoy it? Yes. But what do you do 
that's where you want pop. So the pop for me is the ends because naturally with a balayage, if it's sun kissed, it's going to be darker through to lighter. So that's why I saturate the ends. Also, when you're doing this, it's a really good question, by the way. I always start at the back and work to the top of the crown. Now, the reason I do that is because then I can rinse that at the basin if the rest of it isn't ready. So I start from the back, then I work on the hairline at the front and then work through the sides. So I don't do the hairline first because if that's ready and I can't rinse it, you can't really pop somebody's head forward like that and rinse all that out. It becomes too messy. So that's another good trick there in that. Good. Elevation of the section. Obviously, if you lift, if you just paint down with it, and I'll, that's a good one. Well done, guys. They're coming at me fast and furious today. So look at this. If I take that and I paint, if hold that down like you would a foil, it's too easy to go into the other areas. So I like to lift up. So I like my elevation about there. Sometimes a bit more, and it allows me to focus on the section. That blends in too much to everything else. Really good one there, really good point. Good. What else is going on? Oh, I'm glad I, hope, I'm glad I make it look easy. It'd be terrible if I didn't, wouldn't it, really? That's funny. Right, how do you blend the crown area? I can get to that one for you. My frustration with the block, I know. I know, but you know what? I haven't touched a human head in months now. So when I go back to do a human, I'll be like, oh, I've got to talk to them, I've got to wear a face mask. Socially distance and try and do my job. That's going to be quite funny, isn't it? I'm glad you're liking the tips, guys. Um, yeah, good. Hey, Glenn, how are you? Good to see you on, on here today as well. Um, I am really glad you like them. I'm going to just show you the crown area quickly. Just go over that. Oh, Nigeria's in the house. Hey, Nigeria's too. Right, five oh, and she wants to... Okay. This is a really good one. What would you do with a client who was a 5 and she wanted to be stripped out first and then she wanted a balayage look, so she wanted to go lighter? <clears throat> you can do two things. You could either use your balayage to make her lighter straight off as a corrective service, or you could cleanse the hair first and you know there are different ways to do it. I, you know, if I just want to cleanse out half a shade or something, I use my Blondie detox things. If I want to go higher, then obviously it becomes a bleach bath or something like that. You need to do the corrective work first. So a client that's had an all over colour, she wants to be lighter or she's done it at home and she comes in and she shows you a, you know, this super blonde picture. It's like, well, we need to do all the other bits first. Balayage won't make that. So always be really clear in your diagnostic, in your consultation about what is achievable and what isn't. And make sure you charge for it, guys, because, you know, we, we're the ones with the knowledge. We're the ones that have spent our time training. And, uh, you know, if, if somebody doesn't want to pay that, give them the choice, but don't do it for less. Know your value, it's really important. Crowns. Somebody just asked me about crowns, so this is good. Now, all right, <clears throat> crowns really are important. Now obviously a doll head <laughs> doesn't have a crown. It's like a little bit more difficult. I ordered some curly haired doll heads and they're not great. Um, with normally with a crown, if Okay, so say that's it. Can we see that well? Let me just bring that down a bit more for you. There. That's good. Not so good on my angle, mind you. So if this hair splits here, naturally, if you put a light one here and a light one here on these two, but you, these two, but you don't put one underneath it, what will happen is when that splits, you're going to be dark there. So for my blonde clients, I'm generally doing classic balayage, which is the deep V, the two point, or I'm doing micro. And through here, I would do micro. I would do a small one here, a small one there, and then one underneath it so that it all just, but delicate, and making sure I'm respecting the negative space so that when it moves around, there won't be a dark hole there because that's not what she wants. With your lived-in girls, it's much easier because they don't want it to the crown. They want it sort of lower down. So, but for, for your blondes that want their values to the root, you've got to look at those patterns through there. You've got to make that work. If you're too thick with it through here, it gets really lumpy and it's not pretty. And then you put too many in, and when you blow dry it, you sort of have this bright spot right here. So really play around with that. 
better to do less, and if she comes back and says, I feel a little bit dark, at two in, than it is to do too many and overcompensate, and then it's too light. Um, because you still want to have the pop. You still want to have the darkness because that allows for the bright pieces. Great question. Good. I'm glad um, you're enjoy you've enjoyed these. I'm carrying them on because I have no idea when we're going back to work, guys. I don't have